Ooh, whoops. Hello, I think we're live. One second, guys. I need to make sure you can see my face. All right. What is up, everybody? Okay, so welcome to this um, live stream. Now, this will actually be important. I'm going over a few updates and everything on some recent changes with that you basically is going to involve doing product research. It's kind of dark right here. Sorry if it's let me turn your lights on. Um, it doesn't matter. You guys don't need to see my face too much. Um, anyway, there's going to be some changes involved with product research because what we're going to be going over in this live stream is simply, oh, I got a notification that I'm going live. That's cool. Um, so what we're going to be going over in this call is simply, or this live stream, well, we're not going over Supply Chain Connect. That's what we went over a couple weeks ago, is we're going to do what are you, what do you need to do when sales estimates are just off, completely off that it's obvious like, okay, there's not 20,000 sales off that product or there's not zero sales off that product, okay? What to do when sales estimators like Jungle Scout, FBA Toolkit are completely wrong. So what I want you to do right now is so I can actually understand that you can, um, what's it called, um, see me and everything. Uh, what what I want you to do is put your name and maybe where you're from, or just put your name and see inside the chat box. Just off, completely off um, and it's off. Ow. Um, so I can understand you're here. So please put into the chat box um, saying your name so that I can understand that this isn't paused, that we can hear and everything. Awesome. So it says Brian can hear me. Awesome. I think I can also go into another section my, here. But yeah, guys, hope you're doing all well. And while we're waiting, I'm actually going to post this into our public Facebook group. Join the live stream now. And if you're watching this on the replay, um, we're going to get talking in a couple minutes. So you can fast forward if you're watching this on the replay. But for you who's watching it right now, put into the chat box um, your name so I can understand that you can uh, see these slides and everything. We can hear you. Awesome. You can see me. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Hey, I'm 17. Could I do what you do? Uh, yes, you could, except you need a parent. Hello. Awesome. All right, guys. Cool. So we're going to get into this. Um, it's going to be good. Awesome. You can see in here. Perfect. All right. Let me make myself smaller. And we will dive into this. This is actually going to be important. So even people that are in the course, I'm actually going to make updates to the course lesson uh, or the course after this and should be uploaded tonight. Um, it's nothing big. I think people have already caught on to it quite a bit um, and everything. And also that leads me to the next point. If, if you are in the course, there will be an entirely new module on shipping. Um, just because we have a section, there's a lesson right now that goes over shipping products to FBA. But I'm going to get over way more detailed about with like pallets and LTLs and working with suppliers, what happens when they ship for free, um, a lot of miscellaneous details posted in our Facebook group, but that will be uploaded by Friday night. So let's get into this. All right, so what to do when sales estimates are just completely wrong. Now, if you have no idea what a sales estimate are, they're simply tools like junglescout.com slash estimator. Um, and what they do is they pretty much convert sales ranks to sales per month. So on any product on Amazon, there's going to be a best sellers rank. And basically what that means is Amazon ranks their products from one to millions, whatever is in their catalog. And they base it off each category. So let's say there's a million products listed in the beauty or the baby category in Amazon's catalog. The number one ranked baby product is going to be the one that sells the most amount of units per month or just in general, sells the most amount of units. The millionth one will be the one that sells the least amount, right? And what sales estimates do is you get that sales rank, you go to the certain category, and you basically plug and make sure you know what marketplace you're in, so if you're in the US or Canada, and you plug it into there and that converts to sales per month. So say if we're selling the number one baby product, right? Um, then you realize there's 26,000 uh, sales per month, but Number one in baby is not going to be the same as one in video games. Uh, one in video games, I think, is actually going to be more than that. Or if we do like 10,000, right? 10,000 video games is pretty much not going to sell that much versus like 10,000 in um, home and kitchen are pretty much going to sell quite a bit. Um, now, there's quite a few other ones. There's FBA Toolkit, um, which I'll explain my uses for FBA Toolkit. Um, for books, there's TCK Publishing, which I, I don't really sell any books. Um, and then there's AMC Scout. All right, so now you kind of understand um, to, uh, what our sales estimates are, so that's cool. And I also want to let you guys know is that I'll be going over this topic for probably 
10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll be doing a Q&A at the end. So if you have questions, um, you can feel free to ask the people in the chat right now, but I'll be answering them towards the end. So let me get back to this. So now you know what sales estimates are. Now, do keep in mind when you're looking at these sales estimates is that sales ranks can change. So a product might be the 1,000th best video game product in Amazon's catalog, but in one hour from now, it could be the 900th best. Tomorrow, it could be 500. It could be 5,000 tomorrow. So they can change. That's why it's important. I always emphasize on looking on the history of products for sure. Um, and also when they're calculating these ranks, all these sales estimates, they're going off the entire listing. So like, and that doesn't mean you're going to be getting those exact sales because you're going to be sharing with people. There's other people that are sharing the buy box. Okay. So just keep in mind, it's off the entire listing and most sales are off the buy box. So if you know how many rotations you're going to get the buy box or how many people you're going to be sharing with, you can make a good estimate. Um, and also what can happen is seasons and markets change. Uh, for example, so I, I pretty much always, always use junglescout.com slash estimator. Um, it's always been the most accurate until recently. You understand why in this video, but they just made some changes. Um, but for example, I was selling some die cast cars during the holiday season. And I said, I think the rank was like, mm, I think it was like 3000 in toys and games. And I, I don't know the exact numbers it came out to be, but I think it was about going to pretty much do a thousand sales per month. I pretty much like ordered like 8,000 units or something like that. And so I only put in like 2,000 to my Amazon account. Didn't want to fill up too much inventory, but all 2,000 of those sold out in two weeks. And that was because it was during the holidays. So uh, when the holidays happen, like video games and toys might sell faster. Um, so it depends on the season and how the market changes because like more people are buying products on Amazon now. So the number 100 best seller on Amazon might be getting more sales today than it was a year ago. So things can change, keep that in mind. And also these tools can change, which usually they kind of mess themselves up. For example, Jungle Scout did not change for a very long time and they were pretty accurate for a while, but recently they changed their estimator. Um, so yeah, and also one thing to keep in mind as well is a lot of people get confused with estimators with private labeling. So when people always show these screenshots showing that, oh, Jungle Scout, their web app or the viral launch is telling me that there's, I don't even know if viral launch is used for this, but these whatever private label tools are telling me that this is going to give me 10,000 sales per month. No, no, no. That's that's where people get extremely confused and this always have trouble explaining to people is that this is not private label. When a private label product, a software tells you it has 10,000 sales, that means if you want to get 10,000 sales, that means you have to be on that exact product. You have to be ranked at that same exact point. You have to be like spending those ads to get to that point, okay? But if you're selling brand and name products, right? So if it says like 5,000 best sellers rank in like clothing and you go private label that product, your sales rank starts from nothing pretty much. Basically gets no sales, so it's gonna be the millions. When you're selling brand name products, you're gonna be able to go list under the same exact listing. So if you private label, um, keep in mind that what I'm about to say doesn't really apply to you because like it depends on so many factors. With this, there's not really any factors involved. So just wanna spiel that out of the way. All right, um, but so pretty much what I've gone off of, and this is what I've done basically in the past, is I've basically used everything for junglescout.com slash est estimator. Um, unless it was for Amazon Launchpad, where I'd use FBA Toolkit. And the reason why I would use F or Launchpad, um, not for junglescout.com slash estimator, is because they don't have Amazon Launchpad. Um, Amazon Launchpad's a weird category. It's basically for smaller brands to launch their products and it's usually for private label sellers. Um, I have actually worked it directly with some brands that have their products on Amazon Launchpad. And it's really weird with Amazon Launchpad, but Jungle Scout doesn't have it. But FBA Toolkit does. Um, and also keep in mind, with FBA Toolkit, it goes off of per day. So if it's like the 500th best in Launchpad, it's saying there's been four a day for the past 30 days and five for the last day. Now, the reason why I don't use FBA Toolkit or why I have not is because FBA Toolkit pretty much hasn't updated their website in like two years. Um, like all this graphs you see right here, ever since I've been using it and once I came across it, they haven't changed. Like it's probably been a few years since they've even updated their website. So that's why I don't use it is because this stuff is basically stuck in 2014 or 15 or whatever. Um, but Jungle Scout did update. However, they just updated too much again, and we'll get to that point, all right? 
So um, I would also use TCK Publishing for books because Jungle Scout was just like completely inaccurate for books. I don't know if they still are. Like I remember you'd be able to go like plug in like a million and like it would still show there's like sales. Yeah, it still does. Okay, no, that's not getting 109 sales per month. And I use TCK Publishing, which is uh, for books, BSR, book. That's a little more accurate than that, okay? Um, so yeah, just keep in mind for that. And I've never used AMZ Scout. I think, I'm not even sure when AMZ Scout popped up a sales rank estimate. And I think you used to have to pay for it, but I've never used AMZ Scout. Okay, so AMZ Scout, um, pretty similar to Jungle Scout. You pick a category, put the sales rank in. So if we go to, um, let's call it video games, put in 2000, it's gonna be about 123. And that's pretty accurate. Um, but, if, but if we go to Jungle Scout, we go to video games in 2000, realize there's six, seven. That's a big difference. And personally, I sell a lot of video games and I know how video games work. And I know on a sales rank of 2000, I'm not getting seven sales per month. I'm getting closer if I'm the only one in the buy box of this. So just keep that in mind. And this is the reason why I'm even bringing up this video is because I sell like a lot of video games. And recently I started going over the sales rank and like, one day I woke up and started using this. I was like, when the heck did this change? Because literally two weeks ago, maybe at, mo at most three weeks ago, the sales ranks were perfectly normal. If I were to go put in 2004 video game, it would probably show a number like this into Jungle Scout. And then I was got an Excel file from a supplier. I ran it through Ames Analyzer, did the results. And I put in, I was like, why is this like saying like th this sales rank is getting nothing? Why is it doing this? I was just so confused and I, and I started doing the more numbers. So basically the past 14 days, because I've had some students bring this up too, I've literally been ch tracking products. Like I've been literally tracking 25 products, some of my own, looking at the sales and going from there. Um, and right now, pretty much I can came to, come to the conclusion is that in the past three weeks, Jungle Scout has updated and they're completely off. Um, don't know why. Greg Mercer, if you're watching this video, I'm sorry, but your Jungle Scout estimator tool sucks right now. Um, and it's not very accurate for most categories. Now, some of them, they were accurate for like cell phones, um, like home and kitchen, health and personal care, but for like beauty and personal care, no video games, no, a lot of the stuff was not accurate. And I did find that AMC Scout was more accurate. All right. So let me get into the next points of these slides. So, but however, what do you want to do? Cause again, these are all estimates. All right. No tool is correct. Right. However, Jungle Scout for a very long time, a good like 18 month span, they were pretty accurate with all the sales I was getting, sales that my students were getting, pretty darn accurate until they, they just, I don't know why they changed. Um, so, but what to do to kind of confirm things when things seem off is you can check reviews, check um, recent reviews and make sure you're looking at the parent category. Okay, um, so what I mean by that, we're actually gonna go to a few examples because a kind of rule of thumb I go off of is that like every review is about 25 sales. So what I like to do is I look like to look at, so right now this is a perfect time because it's February 28th, end of the month. I like to look at the recent reviews for this past month. If there's been 10 reviews, looking about 2,500, wait, let me do the math right on that, 125, yeah, looking at like 250 sales per month, about. And, but I also do like between 20 and 50, 50 is kind of on the high end, so if every review times 50, um, would be kind of the high end and but doing it like one review times 25 is pretty accurate I know some categories people don't like to leave reviews But what I'm gonna do now is I have a full a couple products pulled up right here And we're going over some examples of that and kind of going off what I would do to make sure that things um, Are accurate and kind of just give you kind of maybe you can decide for yourself on which um, Estimators can be the most accurate. Okay, so um, What I notice here um, this is what are the product we're looking at. I want to look at the rank. Rank says it's 27 video games. All right, so check this out. 27 video games and AMZ Scout. It's 2384 per month. Actually, kind of, that seems actually low. Um, video games, this is going to be a ridiculous number. Uh, 15,595. So what I would like to do is let's go look at the recent reviews. Now, do keep in mind, it, it's kind of really hard to tell 
um, products when they're that low of a sales rank. Um, so this is, I'm using the worst, or I guess you could say worst or best. I'm using kind of the hardest examples possible because when something is going like at that fast of a rank, it can really, really vary because it's moving so many so fast. Um, however, let's go look at this, all right? But when you get into kind of a moderate range, um, then it, you can definitely track this stuff. But what I like to do is go into the reviews. So actually, you might have not seen me just do that. Um, so you look at the sales rank. What do you want to go, then do is click on customer reviews. Then scroll down to see all customer reviews. And then you're going to see sort by. Hit most recent. Then you're just going to start counting up. So there's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So also I'll stop myself right here. Is that if you saw the sales rank was like twenty three or twenty seven, extremely fast number, and you notice that there was like one review the past thirty days, you know something's off. So that's what I kind of use like um, sales ranks for when I'm like, okay, is this actually true? Let's see if there's actually been reviews in the past 30 days, okay? I forgot the number I was at. Whoops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. I'm only going to go halfway. Uh, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, uh, 43, 44, 45. So I'm going to go stop there at 45 because that's about halfway through the month. So then times that by 5, 90 um, reviews, times that by 25. It says 2,250 about giving off that number I used, which that's pretty accurate right there. Not sure if there's 16,000. Now there could be 16,000. Right, um, but I would say probably it's closer to that 2,384 mark. All right, so that's pretty much what I would do right there. So I guess we'll do it for another product um, that's going to be a little easier to use. Um, let's go use this product right here. So um, rank on this is going to be 5,502. So let's go see. What Jungle Scout says, they say less than five, which basically means zero sales. Whenever Jungle Scout says less than five, it means zero sales. So Jungle Scout's saying there's zero sales on that product, and I know that's not accurate. And I guess they don't like commas. 31 sales. Seems a little more accurate. All right, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to go to the most recent reviews. Okay, go to here. Go to most recent. Uh, one, two, three. So there's been three reviews this month. So that means there's obviously been sales. So you're probably saying three times 25. That's still quite a bit more than AMZ Scout, but it's definitely closer because there's actually been sales. Um, the next thing, what I would actually check is the changing of the sales rank, okay? Because we notice that all three of these reviews happened in February 1. Uh, five and eighth, so the first half of the month has been any reviews since. All right, and we actually notice um, in January it looked like there was more reviews. So let's go see pretty much where the sales rank has basically changed. Okay, um, price just went up. That's interesting. Um, anyways, uh, let's go look at this. So we notice right now. See, the sales rank can change at any single moment. It was just at five thousand five hundred two, and now it's at five thousand eight hundred. 86 okay however let's go look at the recent changes so we notice in january it was kind of dipping down in the low 3000s um 4000 up here uh, almost 6000 see it's as low as 2000 and then we can see here in february 2000 again and then start going generally higher right there in the 8000 so what i'm trying to look at here right if because it's been as low as basically this month, 2,000. Go into AMZ Scout, put in 2,000. 123. 
So at some points it's been 123 per month off that given day, uh, but then also sometimes it's been at 31. Average in the middle, do about, and say there's been three recent reviews in the past 30 days, times about 25, 75. That's probably pretty accurate, I would say. Now again, the whole 25 rule with reviews isn't the most accurate, um, but I would say pretty much with this sales rank right here, 2,000, that's pretty accurate, I would say. So what I'm basically gonna be doing now is using AMZ Scout, um, unless I see Jungle Scout goes changes again or if AMZ Scout changes, but that is pretty much it for this video, okay? So what I'm gonna do right now is open up to questions. We'll probably have questions. I'm gonna be making more concise videos and like some more detailed long videos um, inside the course tonight um, for that, but let me go. Oh, there's a lot of questions. People's message is getting retracked. It's probably saying some dropping some f bombs or putting in links. Thanks, guys. Um, t -t 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 -t. Awesome. So yeah, guys, what do you want? What you want to do right now? Because we got 109 people watching. Is what you can do is you can feel free to ask me any questions you have at this point. Um, I will ask them and I'll keep answering questions as long as people do. But I'll probably be on at the most for the next 15 minutes or so. Um, so yeah, feel free to ask any questions you got at this point. So let's go uh, live stream. Interesting, no questions. If you have no questions, it's totally fine. This is the live stream is yellow. That's not good. Um, Tim asked, have you figured out any math that equates sales rank to sales of the month? Um, I mean, there's not really a math equation because it's different for every single category um, because, again, number 5,000 in like beauty and personal care is going to be a lot different than 5,000 in computer and accessories. So it, there's no like exact like math equation for it. Um, is AMZ Scout has a subscription? No. So... There says sales estimator. This is free. I'm pretty sure this used to be like a paid tool. I'm not wrong. I don't know. I've never really used AMZ Scout, but this is free. I'm not paying for this right now. I'm not signed in. Um, I know you cannot give legal advice or financial advice, but do you recommend starting uh, your FBA course while selling on eBay using your methods to selling to build money uh, for purchasing your supplies? I don't, I don't even, or from sellers. I don't even think that's financial advice, but um, so, um, I mean, so you're doing eBay right now to kind of build up capital. That's totally fine. I mean, you can feel free to join the Amazon course right now if you have the money to go do so. Um, I wouldn't see why not to at least like learn the process while you're building up your capital. That's totally fine because I mean with Amazon, it's a long-term game. So you might as well learn it now and then maybe it might motivate you to um, gain more capital in the eBay business for sure. It might just give you an end goal uh, to go do that. But I mean, if you have the capital for sure, um, yeah. Hey Bo, um, t -t 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 -t. hey Bo, have you considered using um, the chart that Stefan on full time FBA uses? No, his chart. No offense to him, but that chart is the most outdated thing you would ever see. Like, like do not go off of percentages. No, never go off of percentages for sales ranks. All right, because the top one percent best selling, like, or the top one percent in like the kitchen category, could literally mean zero sales. But 1% in like the cell phone accessories could mean thousands of sales. Do not go off percentages. That chart is popular because that was like the only thing that people use for a long time. Uh, there is no cost to AMZ Scout. Uh, but when you do the, uh, well, the 8,000 units, what'd you do with the other units that were sold? I actually had them shipped to my house and then I just shipped them out as soon as I saw that they all sold out. I was like, well, okay, that sold out quickly. So I had a question. Yeah, I, I think I answered it, Tim. If you have another one, feel free to answer again. So MZ Scout is better than Jungle Scout? Uh, I mean, yeah, as of right now, uh, because literally Jungle Scout changed in the past two weeks. Um, Greg Mercer, uh, if you're watching this video, feel free to update your stuff. Um, it's not accurate. I've been tracking 25 products for the past couple weeks. Some of them were my own products. All right. Just... Uh, just until we can trust the numbers on. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. 
because it's always been good. Like I've been using it for the longest time, never had any problems. Um, so how do you see FBA developing over the next few years? Um, I see arbitrage sellers, less and less of them. I see more people doing the wrong things, not being in business anymore. Um, I see people still thinking that private label is the only way to sell on Amazon. Um, I see more doors getting open for um, distributors working with uh, online retailers on um, Amazon because it's becoming easier with like the shipping process and Amazon's kind of rolled out with a few new things. Like went over last week with um, the supplier connect chain or the connect chain thing, which really makes it easier. So I see it making uh, easier for this business model, way harder for arbitrage sellers. Um, and I still see people doing the same exact thing with private label where they think they can just go make up some random product and start selling. Um, do you see, oh yeah, that's what I just answered. How high of a chance do I have of succeeding because it's hard to make a lot of money at 17? I have three K saved up right now. I want to do this. I mean, if you want to make it work, it will, it's not really that complicated of a business. It will work. I mean, I can't guarantee anything, but you're buying low and you're selling higher. Um, just make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you know product research. Uh, make sure you're getting set up with the correct suppliers um, and you're good to go from there. I mean, I mean, I guess if you're like afraid to get into the business, you could kind of get into eBay first, kind of understand how selling products online work. Um, but I mean, it's not a crazy business model. It's not too complicated. How do you deal with taxes? Um, I pay business taxes. Um, again, I can't give tax advice. However, I am getting a, a tax guy who's certified by the IRS to make some videos for me. Um, however, um, I pay taxes, pay quarterly taxes, pay like BOD taxes for the local city and everything. Yeah, your math question for reviews, number of sales, great. Yeah, I mean, don't always go off it exactly, but it's kind of just a, I use it just to see what sales estimator is more accurate pretty much when things are just going whack. Hmm. Uh, thanks. Why am I moving myself? Um, thank you. if I set up payment plans, will I be able to start learning or do I have to wait until all payments are complete? Um, yeah, so we do have a payment plan. You guys can reach out to supportvillegrable.com for that information. Um, uh, but on the payment plan, you get access to everything right away. There's no restrictions. There's no nothing. It's just that you have payments the next three months pretty much that are broken up. So there's no restrictions to your access or anything. What's up, broski? Uh, oh, I got a lot of questions. Um, What's up, Myotech or Mylek? He asked a lot of good questions. Uh, what program do you use for multi-channel fulfillment? I just do it manually. Um, what's it called? Let's see. Um, I might be using a tool called Cellbrite. Maybe, maybe not. But I, I just do it manually right now. Um, I know there's like Channel Advisor, which they charge an arm and a leg. Like I spoke to Channel Advisor, and they wanted like. 1% of my sales, 12 grand up front and like 12 grand a year. I was like, no, I'm just gonna do it manually. It's not worth that much, I'm gonna go pay a VA. Um, but I just do it manually. Thanks, Bo. Uh, can you look up Ice Bag uh, by Audiotech? What do you think? I'll look this up real quick. Um, Ice Tech by... Um, Conrad, if you can email me the ASIN, um, cause I'm not sure what I'm really looking for here, but feel free to email me the ASIN Conrad. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't know what I'm looking at. Uh, what, what working with suppliers do you try and negotiate the price with a supplier offers a product at several deals or slightly too high in price on items? Um, so the biggest thing, if you take all the units from a supplier, they're usually like, for sure willing to take the price down. Um, especially like deals that suppliers send out in emails that kind of just blast it out or send it off to everybody, they usually will go cheaper. I mean, pr but pretty much if you buy more units from them and take like the entire pallet, then they'll for sure go down in most cases. There are some products to pick from. Is there a particular category better than others? Uh, not really. Um, I mean, yeah, no, there's not really. I mean, I don't sell anything in the electronic category. Um, I have a student who's doing 200K a month in the electronic category. Um, so it's just a preference, I would say. Um, like, I mean, I wouldn't say there's like a category better than the other. 
Like someone could probably make an argument for every category. I mean, well, I mean, sometimes beauty and grocery tends to be a little less competition. So I guess if you're looking competition-wise, beauty tends to be a little cheaper or less competitive. Uh, hey, been following you a while now. I want to thank you for sharing uh, your knowledge. My question is, in your course, do you offer counsel or how to get access to wholesale companies? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by counsel, um, but the large part of what the course is focused on is finding, I mean, it gives you all the information you need from like starting up from the very beginning, uh, learning how to sell on Amazon, learning really in depth about product research, learning about the buy box, uh, learning about ungating, um, and then also it goes really in depth and go finding suppliers. Uh, we have eight different strategies for finding suppliers. Um, some are opportunity buy, some are normal stock. Um, and once you go through that process, finding suppliers is not a very challenging process, but it's more important on working with suppliers because I could give someone a supplier and I can make a lot of, or I could get, okay, so I could give a supplier to one student who knows how to work with suppliers and to another random person who has no idea how to work with suppliers. And the student who knows how to work with supplier or the person who knows how to work with suppliers is going to make money with them. The one that's not, does not know how to work with suppliers is not going to make any money. So we go over quite a bit how to work with them and how to get set up and everything. Let me know if that answered your question. Uh, what is your pricing strategy to win the buy box? Match lowest price. Uh, match the current buy box price. So uh, let's see. Let's go to. I'm just gonna pull up this product right here. So right here, the price is thirty dollars ninety nine cents. If I want to go sell this product, I would sell it for thirty dollars ninety nine cents, and I would start rotating the sales. Um, let's see. I don't want to make sure I didn't miss any question. Uh, do you know about viral launch? What do you think about it? Viral launch is for private label. Um, it's not for this business model at all. So that's what I think about it. Um, when a supplier said they only sell to brick and mortar, who, to, how to go around it? I'm assuming you're asking how to go around with it. Um, so, I mean, you can just choose not to work with them. That's for sure. I mean, there's not a lot of suppliers that don't just sell to brick and mortar. Um, there are a couple, but you can maybe talk to them the reasons why there's restrictions on brick and mortar. So I would ask them that question of why there's restrictions um, for only selling brick and mortar. I'm seeing distributors doing 100% deals direct with Amazon. Uh, not That's not really how that works. Unless, I mean, if you're saying they're distributor, okay, if, if a distributor is selling 100% to Amazon, they're not a distributor. So I, you need to... I think you don't know the term for distributor um, because I mean I've had suppliers who say they've like had deals made offered them by Amazon and they just say it doesn't make any sense to do so because like I mean Amazon's not their entire business most of my suppliers 80% of their business is brick and mortar the Bo Crable not gonna say your name do you want to go skiing this weekend <laughs> I have no idea how to ski Brian I did go uh, snowmobiling the other day um, do we need review groups when adding brand name products to the listing? Nope. No, we do not. Uh, would you buy an established FBA account from someone getting out of the business? Um, there are ungated separate categories. Is there a problem that Amazon would have by doing this? I mean, if you buy it legally, there's no problems. Um, I mean, you can do that. It depends what it's selling for, um, but just make sure you're legally buying it like the entity and you're not just buying it from a personal account. Um, but I mean, I mean, if you plan to get ungated in like categories and stuff like subcategories, that might cost you maybe a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars. And if the account's less than that, then for sure. But if not, then just set up a new account. It doesn't really take that long to really get approved and stuff. Once you start hitting sales in like a few months, Amazon would start automatically approving you and stuff. Why are there multiple? Uh, why are there multiple listings of certain items with buy low or with both high and low rankings? So. Um, and Amazon, if you're selling brand name products, there should only be one listing on the product. However, um, most people do not know how to sell on Amazon, so they might go create a new listing. When you do that, you're basically starting from scratch, and that's not smart. Um, so the reason why there is multiple ones is because the people just don't know what they're doing. And that's pretty much the only answer. Unless it's a different product, right? If it's a different variation or something. Um, do you ever do market research mainly by Amazon bestsellers? No. No, I never do that. I just see what my suppliers have. So I agree, Bo. I notice uh, most of the times AMZ and Jungle Scout are similar, but sometimes they have a huge... Yeah, I decided to combine the two numbers and divide by two strategies. That's a good strategy for sure. Um, yeah, that's for sure good. Uh, I'm leaning, leaning more towards AMZ Scout since I've tracked the 25 products recently. 
Um, thank you. I'm guessing if I get your course, you'll have all the knowledge I need. I mean, if you get in the course, you're going to have more knowledge than you need. Um, so yeah. If I start with today with 3K, what monthly profit would be real sweet to reach in six months? Um, so again, I can't like give guarantees and everything like that, but I look at like selling on Amazon is basically investing and my return on investment right now is 40% and I'm turning that in about um, 10 weeks. So every 10 weeks, I'm basically getting 40% on my money and times it over a year time. There's times that by five about um, like over 200% on my money in a year because of a year's time. Um, however, um, typically industry average, and I'm using these as low conservative numbers, 30% is about the industry average over three months. So say, so say on the low end, you're getting 10% on your money. Um, you can just go into a calculator. Let's go 3,000 times 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1. Um, in six months, I'll try to do that again. And when I, yeah, in six months, instead, you have 5,314. Now, I've sold products that have over a 300% ROI. I've sold, and I've sold them a lot faster. Um, I've sold stuff that has a 10% return on investment in a couple weeks. So it can be faster, um, but just look about getting 30% return on your investment and selling that out between one to three months. And then reinvest. Is a business license and business certificate the same? Um, probably, yeah, that's probably just a different terminology used in the state, I would assume so. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Um, yeah, so pretty much like, just go to, like, setting the business license is just simply like that you have a sole proprietor or you have an LLC or you have an corporate, just showing that you have a business pretty much. Um, I'm currently trying AMZ Scout and not calculating sales and it's sales estimate. Can you try it from your end? So let's go to clothing. 716. Looks like it's working for me. Um, yeah, it works. Can you post the link course? Um, you need to email me if you want the payment options, but I'll post a link to the course right here. Sorry if I'm missing questions, guys. Um, so if I set up payment plan and I'm already in the hustle course, will the hustle payment go away? Yeah, yeah, the eBay hustle course will go away. How old are I? I am 19. Um, how do you launch a new brand product that doesn't already have Amazon catalog yet? You would have to go create up a new listing. Um, and the only time I would do that is if I know the product already has um, Oh, looks like I skipped some questions. Oh, will I seem legit if I, as sole proprietor? No, um, they don't care. You got a reseller's permit, you're fine. Uh, you won't seem less legit. Um, back to the question that I was about to go over. Um, um, what was I going to ask? Oh, yeah, making a new listing on a brand name product. So I would only do that if I know it already has like um, traction or traffic from somewhere else. So like if they have a website, and like they're already getting customers, they're gonna get sales because people are looking for an Amazon. Or the other way around, um, there's a company that I'm working with right now that sells really great on Amazon, um, but I'm actually putting their listings on Walmart and on eBay and putting their pricings there and everything like that because they already have traffic from somewhere. And the traffic will also go somewhere else. So I would only do that if, um, and that's not even the question you asked, but how you launch it would be the same way as creating a new listing. What do you do when the MOQ is items a little too high? For example, the product sells uh, 500 over six months, but the MOQ um, is 700, 800. Would you still buy a product? So what I would do is uh, I would see what I can do with other units. So I would see, can I go sell it on other marketplaces? Could I go sell it internationally? Could I sell in the UK? Could I sell in Canada? Could I sell in Mexico? Um, that would be my first option. My second option would be to actually see if I can go wholesale it out to other suppliers. Um, that's a business you can kind of get involved with a little more advanced. I do touch over that uh, towards the end of my course in like advanced section. Um, but that's the routes I would probably go. So if you see what your suppliers have, do you know if their products sell fast? Like for sure you'll get rid of the pallet in two to three weeks, two, three, two weeks are pretty quick. Um, I mean, it depends how much units you buy. Cause I always, I always like to try to buy as many units as possible that my supplier has. Um, because that leads to less competition. But I mean, you basically got to, I mean, there's a few tools like AMZ Analyzer, Price Checker 2, Ecom Spy that you can have it basically do the product research for you and it'll tell you how many sales and profits and everything. 
Yeah, expect uh, 11, 4409 in revenue at 25% after six months. Okay, that's nice. Um, don't put common into AMC. Yeah, yeah, do not put a common to AMC Scout. Um, hey, Bo, if there's a manufacturer supplier, and I'll be, guys, I'll be on for the next five minutes. I'll let you guys know that right now. I'm going to be posting a lot more content on YouTube and actually in the next like 30 days. Um, oh, I just went away. Whoops. Okay, so I got the questions right here. Um, but I'm going to be posting more con content in the next like five uh, or like 30 days or so. Um, but last five minutes, so feel free to put in your last questions right now. I'll let you guys know that right now. I don't, I don't, I want to make sure I didn't like miss any questions. Um, but let me ask early lobsters. Hey Bo, if there's a manufacturer supplier in the UK and they emailed me and said they only sell on Amazon, asking what else could I do? How can I stay away from them to sell to me? Um, let's see. So they emailed me and said they could only sell on Amazon. They only sell on Amazon. I mean, it sounds like you contacted a manufacturer. Now I, I mean, you can go contact manufacturers. Um, however, when you're selling big brands, um, you're not going to buy from manufacturers. You're going to be buying from distributors. Um, so, I mean, if they're just a small manufacturer who sells on Amazon themselves, then you wouldn't want to deal with them. But usually, in the most case, for big brands, they don't. Also, how often do you jump from product to product, or do you have a steady stream of supply of same products that you've sold before? Um, so there's basically two processes of buying products in this whole space, pretty much. Uh, one's called opportunity buys, and two is called normal stock. So normal stock is stuff you can go reorder all the time. Um, you can just rely off of it. Opportunity buys is pretty much stuff where it typically has higher return on investment. So when you hear me saying, like, I've had products I've sold literally over 300% return on investment, that's because it was an opportunity buy. Um, with that, there's usually a finite amount of inventory. So if there's 2,000 units available, there might only be 2,000 units available for quite a while. Um, so that's good. That sometimes it can be higher ROI if you buy all the units, lower competition. Um, normal stock is stuff where you can go reorder all, all the time. Um, about 40% of my sales are basically from normal stock. The rest are opportunity buys. Um, and now with opportunity buys, I make less of those deals like actual amounts of making those purchase orders throughout a year, but they're usually going to profit me. Like it might profit me five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand, but it might take a few, like a couple months to do so with normal stock. You're usually flushing out of that inventory in a month's time reordering, uh, maybe in a couple like weeks time. And, but it's usually to lower uh, return on investments, which is fine, especially if you're turning over your inventory. And usually with those, I'm making more purchase orders. Hope that makes sense. Um, uh, can you recommend a service that would create a website for me, like a monthly fee? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't, oh, I just froze. You don't need a website. Well, I'm back. Okay. You don't really need a website, but if you want to, you could go search to someone like on Fiverr and stuff or like what, uh, Michael said, but I would reach out to a virtual assistant. How's Walmart going? Walmart's good. Um, getting payments from them and post like on my Instagram story a little bit about getting paid from Walmart and everything. It's decent. Um, it could be better. I'm mostly in there for the future because I know they're um, sometimes don't accept people in. Thanks for giving back. No problem, Vito. Yeah, it's okay. Yep, exactly. I, I assumed it was a small niche company if they sell directly to manufacture. Wait, sounds good, Gabriella. How to get a business license? Um, go to your local Department of Revenue, go to a local bank, um, go to a local state office, and they'll show you how to do that. Um, interesting. Um, I will go double check to see what's up with AMZ Scout. Um, yeah, I'll go double check that and see what's wrong. Or what do I need to sell on Amazon? So to sell on Amazon, you don't need a business license. You don't need a reseller's permit. To buy from US-based wholesalers, distributors, and manufacturers, you need a reseller's permit and a business setup. Yep, sounds good, Jeremy, and keep up with your eBay sales. Um, yeah, so last few questions, guys. Um, yeah, last few questions, then I'll be off for the call. Um, but feel free to follow me on, or make sure, I assume you're already subscribed if you're watching this live stream, make sure to follow me on Facebook. Um, I've been posting a little kind of daily on Instagram and stuff like that. Um, I will be hosting a webinar on Thursday, so feel free to go attend that. 
If you're watching this on the replay, um, I will most likely have a link in the description for the webinar. But if you're on the call right now, I'm going to be sending it in right now. Um, brother, have you ever lost an Amazon store? Um, so when I first started on Amazon, um, this is the reason why I also hate arbitrage too, is I transferred from eBay over to um, Amazon and I was kind of basically doing arbitrage. Um, and I actually got my account suspended when I first did that because like when I did, was on eBay, I sold like uh, at least over $100,000 worth of Nike socks. So I was like, okay, I can sell a bunch of Nike socks on eBay. Let me do it on Amazon. And shortly I got suspended by doing that. Uh, but then that's when I kind of figured out this business model. And then ever since, ever since I've been doing this business model by working with legit suppliers, never any problems. And I've never heard of anyone ever having problems like that either. Um, I want to be an authorized online retailer. Can you guide me? Um, I have a course for that at bocrable.com is my name and .com. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm able to provide quite a bit of help to students as out of the course, um, but that'll show you exactly how to. So thank you guys for watching this. Um, if you do not know yet, I have a live, live stream every single Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Um, but yeah, make sure to have a great day. Make sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below on this video um, and give it a like and just have a great day. And I'm gonna go for a run and then go eat dinner. <laughs>